Welcome back to BGG Con Line for May 2020. I am here with Clay Ross from Capstone Games. Great to have you here, Clay, from beautiful Ohio, somewhere in the middle of Ohio. I'm not sure. Where yeah, it's Cincinnati. Yeah. Cincinnati. Oh, All right. So yeah. today we are looking at Crystal Palace, which was released by Feuerland Spiel at Spiel 19. And now you yeah. have the version being distributed in North America that has just arrived right. at your warehouse recently. I know. Yeah. Spiel 19, back when uh, things were good. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yes. we've got so, the, the. Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, I hope you can give an overview of the game. What's the setting of the world we're in? What are we trying to do? Who are we? And then hoping you can give an overview there and then possibly uh, lead us through a couple yeah. of turns. Yeah, so Crystal Palace, it's a it's a pretty big game. I mean, Foyerland, they're known for Terra Mystica, Gaia Project, A Feast for Odin. Um, and this game is is going to sit pretty well with those other titles as, as well. Um, it's, a, it's a nice, heavy game. Um, but yeah, so what you are in this is you represent a country and there's going to be a world's, the first world's fair in London in the year 1851, and you're going to represent your country. And so you have two years to prepare for this event. And what you're trying to do is have all these cool, um, prototypes and inventions built using the help of certain characters. And it's, it's kind of whimsical. You got like the climate changers, one of my favorite inventions you can make. Um, and you can have the assistance of like Sherlock Holmes, Levi Strauss, um, and all kinds of other different uh, fun characters out there. So, um, but yeah, you can see the board here. There's a lot going on. And, um, but yeah, you're going to be playing over five game rounds um, and trying to accumulate the most victory points, which will cement yourself as, as the best nation in the first world's fair. So that's kind of like the overall approach to what's going on in the game. So um okay do you what's do you the deeper or? player yeah i mean we can lead us through it to a few turns i wanted to see first of all what's the player count and do the countries have any differences in how they special powers or backgrounds or uh is that more yeah. thematic yeah absolutely i mean so it is um it's going to be so we'll start with that the first one was it's two to five players um so the it has a wide player range um, we are looking at doing a solo mode for this as well. Um, but but anyway, you've got two to five players. That's, that's a pretty nice player count. And it plays very well across all player counts because, um, as you can see on this picture you've got here, um, these rectangular locations um, on the top center of the, of, the, uh, of the picture, these are all the action locations you can go to in the game. And they are all player dependent. Um, so there's sometimes there's multiple locations for, uh, like number two, the, uh, British museum. I believe there's a couple different tiles in the game that, uh, that come with it, depending on the player count. And so, however you have the game set up for the number of players, you'll have the corresponding player boards. So, um, and then with the nations, um, there's five game boards in the game, but they're all double-sided with each unique nation and they all have their own, um, asymmetric um, objectives in this game, what you're trying to do for that nation. So there's so many different ways to play the game. Like if, if you have a certain way you like, a, like a certain strategy type, you like to, to, to play a game with, there's going to be that in this game for you to, to kind of explore. So, um, but yeah, it's what it's at its core. It's a worker placement game driven by dice. Um, the dice that you have are, um, yeah, there they are. They, uh, you don't roll the dice in this game. You're going to be setting the pip values and that's going to determine the strength of that worker essentially. And the higher the pip value, the, 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 the more likely you are going to be able to take this action. Um, however, it comes at a cost and for each pip value you have on your die, you have to pay $1. So it, it can get quite expensive if you're putting all sixes out there. So, um, but yeah, that's kind of like the, the high level thing. Um, do you want to talk about okay. some of the actions and like what you're doing? Yes, especially it, you say you don't roll the dice, but are you determining which side you're turning them to or how are, why are they dice in particular rather than something else? Yeah. Okay. So this is really cool. Um, the, uh, so 
again, you play over five game rounds, and what you're going to do in the first phase of every game is you're going to secretly, you everybody has four dice to start with. You're going to secretly select the value of each of your dice. So you're kind of looking at the, the different locations that you can go to during the game, and you, you're also paying attention to how much money you have because you have to be able to pay uh, for the for each pip value that you assign each dice. Um, and so you'll, so you'll secretly select um, the values of each of your dice. And then once everybody's ready, you reveal, you pay uh, whatever value it is. There's some benefits for like, if you have the highest value, cumulative value, um, you're going to be the, the start player that round. If you have the least, um, you get what's called a newspaper. It's one of the, the four major resources in the game. Yeah, it's newspapers. <laughs> <laughs> so Okay. Yes. So in this case, yellow... Yeah, yellow would be paying eight dollars for their dice, um, and then we would go around the table. Um, one uh, starting with the uh, start player, placing one dice on any of the eight locations that you want to potentially partake in. Um, so, for example, let's see, we're going to go to the um, Reform Club, and you're going to notice that there, in this case, was it five locations that you can go to um, down there. The value mm -hmm. of the die that's printed on each space is the minimum requirement to enter that space. So you barely just meet it with that. Um, you're going to get a bonus action because there's a little symbol above that. I'm not even going to talk about that, but um, you get a, a bonus assistant action, which is really cool in the game. Uh, but yeah, so you can place a f four, five, or six in that spot. Everybody's going to go around placing their dice at various locations. And so like, let's do a red one. Um, go ahead and put the red one in the reform club as well. Yeah, five. So they put a five there. And so let's pretend like the entire round was over um, of placing dice. We would start at the patent office, which is in the top left. That's location one. And you're going to resolve that. All the dice there would get resolved and so forth. Um, then we would jump to location two, then three, then four. Once we get to location five, in this example that I'm showing here, we have two dice available. How it gets resolved is whoever played the, the largest value dice would go first. So in this case, red gets to play first. And they would slide their dice into the leftmost available spot below. Yes. And it triggers, there's a, there's a benefit to going first on this location as well. You get a buzz, what's called a buzz. Um, and that's going to be on the uh, administration track there all the way in the top right corner. Um, so it's always good to generate buzz for your country before going to the World's Fair. People are going to start talking about you and um, anticipating what you're doing. Um, so then Red would be able to carry out this action. And this one specifically is acquiring a character. And you would be able to choose any of those four characters. The only catch is you have to immediately pay for them, um, whatever's in that red banner on the top left of the card. So most of them, I think, are like one gear. Um, the guy on the right is $2, I believe. Um, that's an energy. Yeah, that would be an energy. That's another. So those are the three main resources. You have newspapers, gears, energy, and dollars, or pa British pounds in this game. Uh, but yeah, so then after red chooses a character, then yellow would be able to go um, and take a character. Um, there's some benefits to getting a character across the bottom of the, of the card. Um, yeah, so that would be resolving the actions in that, okay. in that way. So you're so. mapping out a plan for that round ahead of time, starting even with the initial uh, choice of dice. And yeah, then ideally like, okay, so where you want to go and do everything. Yeah, exactly. That I mean, that really hits the nail on the head because before you've even taken any actions and before you've decided where to go, you have to set your dice values to something that's a affordable for you um, and b you, you're just you, you're like okay i think i need to go here here you gotta like plan which areas you want to go to and then everybody reveals their dice and now you're like okay well now sarah over there has a, a like a really powerful set of dice you know like what it, where is she going to go and like it, it, is she going to beat me to the certain locations that i'm going to go to because you're going to notice each location um, especially the, the third one there, the Bank of England, there's four possible locations. Like people could place four dice. However, 
when you go to resolve the action, only two of those dice that were actually placed there will be taking the action. So you can really cut some people out of out of valuable actions, and they've still had to pay their dice. So it can get kind of kind of nasty if you're if you're not careful. So okay. um, all right. Yeah. Uh, so you mentioned that the boards change based on the player count. So you're going to have different a different number of die spaces available on the various boards, I assume, in order to keep Correct. competition roughly the same. Yes. Yeah. How, how yeah, else does it, definitely it change? Shrinks down. What's that? How, how else does it change? Is it, I mean, usually with two players, it's a lot more, uh, games in general tend to be much more uh, in your face, two player, because any any way I can hurt you is good for me. But yeah, that's four and five players, that, that doesn't work. Yeah, it, it, I can see what you're saying. In this game, uh, because there's always going to be eight locations, um, you don't have too much headbutting in a two-player game. Um, you can play that way, though. It, it just depends on the, your play style. Do you want to be aggressive and try to figure out what your opponent's doing and then go out of your way to prevent them from achieving their goal? Um, or you can swing for the fences looking at your your current player board and your state of play and try to really have the, the highest possible score you can you can achieve. Um the buzz track, I, I, I did briefly mention that before, but that little administration board on the top right corner um, for a two-player game, that can get kind of really cutthroat because you always want to be in for, you want to be the furthest ahead on that buzz track. It'll give you a lot of points at the end of the game. Um, but yeah, th it's just honestly your play style. How, how do you want to play the game and what, what position do you find yourself in? That's, that's what I really value about this game is just the, the different play styles that you can come to the game with. Okay, for character cards, it looks like they have lots of information on there. You mentioned the cost on the left-hand column, benefit on the bottom, are they multi-use cards with different other, yes. other aspects? This is what's come cool. Yeah, I don't think I've seen this, this, what I'm gonna tell you, I don't think I've seen this in a game before. So there's two types of cards. At the patent office on the top left, location one, those are the prototypes. These are your ideas of inventions you want to make, um, or their patents, I'm sorry. You're going to make prototypes later on in the game. But these are your ideas. When you flip it over like that, that is now a complete prototype that you've built. Um, okay. Each uh, card has a little banner on the along the middle right-hand side of the card. Um, it'll have a name and... Um, yeah, it'll have a name of a certain character. Each card is linked to one or two characters on the um, on the red deck over there. So in the Reform Club. Yeah, in the Reform Club. So if you by chance build a prototype and you have the same uh, matching character card, you're going to get some nice bonus points. It's a nice synergy bonus for you um, during the game. Also. Um, they're also, what's really cool when you build a prototype is um, when you build it, the bottom of the card, the effects take effect immediately. And what's really cool is you choose the player that those effects, every single one of those effects apply to. So you can either choose yourself or you can choose anybody else. Um, obviously you wanna choose the, the really good benefits for yourself, but sometimes there's a really nice benefit on the card and sometimes at the same time, the other benefit is really bad for your situation. So you might want to offload that to somebody else for them to deal with. Um, so it's it's really cool how the, the cards tie together. Um, the benefit being bad for your situation seems interesting that it would be. Yeah. I mean, you, you almost never think at. of a benefit being, a, yeah, more money or more something or, yeah, <laughs> options, whatever it is. Like, for example, um, some uh, of them, it costs money and you might not have the money to, you can take loans in this game. It's a game with loans and you can take them at any time, but there's such a huge penalty on you that, yeah, you have to pay $2 for this card, but the 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 other benefit for paying the $2 is really high for you. You might, and let's say you only had a dollar, you would end up having to take a loan. Is it really going to benefit you that much to have that secondary uh, effect? So it's, again, depending on where you are in the game. So um, okay. the economy is super tight in this game. If you like um, games with a lot of tight 
um, like a tight economy where you're, you're, you're cash strapped, resources are really tight. Um, it doesn't give you handouts, which I really like in games. It makes you really work for your work for your uh, as you build your engine, essentially. Um, the characters when you when you hire the characters uh, on the, from the Reform Club, there's a there's a bunch of numbers along the bottom in those different uh, squares. That is how much money you have to pay that person every single round. Um, it goes down as you progress to the right, and that ties directly into location four. So if you look at location four, everybody has a marker on the leftmost, yeah, on the leftmost spot. As you progress on that um, action track, one space at a time, you're reducing your payment for each red card you have at the end of the round. Because you gotta pay these guys for helping you out, prepare for the World's Fair. Um, but also progressing on that track will give you some nice benefits along the way. So everything's tied together in this game. Everything is so okay. neatly like knitted together that it's just, it's, it is really cool. Yeah, so you, you're you getting point points at the black from, market. Yeah, you're getting points from everything or here and there, or is there a focus of what you're trying to do? Or just yeah, so there's each game. ways to get. I gotta pull up the little uh, rule book because there's a nice section that at, that really talks about. I'm gonna show it real quick. Here's the 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 six main ways of getting victory points, um, and it just kind of covers. Uh, let's show it right there. So I'm a little delayed, but um, it shows basically the different ways of getting victory points. Um, it's got a little bit of uh, Uwe Rosenberg. Um, I, I don't know, I like to call this mechanic the Uwe Rosenberg mechanic. On your player board, right in the middle, you've got these uh, 10 locations that have a minus two star symbol. Um, you have to cover all those up or you're going to lose two points at the end of the game for each uncovered location. And what those are, those are research tiles. Um, you can get those in various ways um, through building prototypes, going to location two on the game boards, yeah, exactly. There you go. Getting loans can cover them up, but it'll give you even more negative points. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's there's so much going on in this game. It's a very intricate network of different mechanics, um, like tightly sewn together. Where there's no loopholes in this game. I mean, you can't. Um, th there's not going to be one overarching strategy that everybody does. It's there's there's so many different ways to play the game. Um, everybody starts with four dice. Um, you can get up to six dice if you have the money to really um, pay for each one of those dice to place them out there. Um, there's just there's a lot to offer in this game. It's it's such a blast to play. It's very interactive, um, and I've I've just been really enjoying it lately. So I'll mention Crystal Palace seems very much in the Capstone Games wheelhouse. I mean, you launched your company with Arkwright. Uh, you've done yeah. <laughs> uh, some of the, the Ruhr titles. It is very much on brand uh, for the other titles you've released. Of course, you have expanded your line a bit over the years. This year as well, you plan to release New York Zoo and Stick'em, uh, in addition to Ride yeah. the Rails. We looked at Ride the Rails at Gamma. I don't know if you can talk a bit yeah. about Stick'em and New York Zoo. Yeah, so Stick'em is one of those card games that's it's been in, uh, it's a German game called Stickeln, I believe is how you pronounce it, but it's a very, very popular trick-taking game in Germany. And it came out in 1993. Um, so we're bringing over the, uh, the English language version of it. And uh, if you like games like Euchre, I would even throw in their hearts or spades, um, any kind of like fast trick-taking game, but has, has some ability to, um, how would you say it, Eric? Like uh, shoot for the moon kind of thing, um, or just possibly sounds good. Really, you can really stick it to people in this game. You can really hinder their ability to to do certain, uh, basically screw over their entire round. So as we experienced in Reno, <laughs> that's right. So, so each round, uh, just giving a short description of the game, you're dealt a hand of cards. Uh, cards, you have a number of different colors depending on the player count, and you're going to choose one yeah. of those colors as your pain suit. 
And so every card you take of that color is worth negative points equal to the numeric value of that card. And every other card yeah. you collect is only one point. That's it. Exactly. So Yeah, just one point. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah. the thing is, that pain color is public information. Everybody knows what your pain color is, what you do not want to get. And I like to play aggressive and give people their pain color because I feel like they need that. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, it's just a blast. It's a fun, quick 20, 30 minute game. So. And a um, quick overview in New York Zoo. So New York Zoo is Uwe Rosenberg's next game coming out. And what you're doing is building a zoo with a bunch of different types of polyominoes. Um, What's really cool is he's combined his polyomino elements from his game designs of late, plus the typical animal breeding that you're familiar with, with an Uwe Rosenberg game. And as you're populating your zoo, uh, you have to have this certain amount of animals on your tiles in order to build it even further um, to, to be able to populate your zoo. Um, and it's essentially a race game. You want to be the first player to completely fill up your uh, game board with the tiles and, and you'll be the winner. So it's a nice game for casual gamers looking for a little bit more uh, strategy and a little bit more depth of complexity to their game. Um, yeah, so that's and that's coming out. That was going to be our Gen Con release this year, but unfortunately, uh, we'll be doing it online. But uh, we're, we're still coming forward with it um, in probably July timeframe. Okay. It's definitely been an interesting year. I mean, interesting is one way to put it, uh, but definitely challenging for a publisher because of course you don't start manufacturing now. You had a plan months ago for what you were going to do. Absolutely. How has that changed yeah. over the, the past several months? Yeah, it definitely has an effect. Um, we have to go to a market different ways. Um, conventions were a really great way of, of promoting the titles and getting the buzz out there about our games. And um, now we're going to be looking at doing things online and I'm considering doing um, like little capstone events where we'll have little intimate gatherings of people online and just teach games and show them how to play and just kind of grow together that way. So, okay. But yeah, uh, I don't know if there's anything maybe. else you want to say that uh, someone asked about whether the misprints in Crystal Palace have been corrected for this edition? Yeah, of the game? so in the second, yeah. yeah, in the second uh, printing that's here now, the there was a very, very, very minor misprint, um, and that has been completely corrected. Um, it was on one of the character cards, I believe. One of the numbers along the bottom was incorrect um, on one of the sides. So, but yeah, that that's completely uh, fixed now. I do want to mention. Can I mention two things about this game real quick? Sure. We got okay. a couple of formats. So. <laughs> Number one is we have a promo card coming out, um, a couple of different promo cards for the game. So we're going to be giving that away on our website soon. And then also number two is um, if you're interested in um, Crystal Palace, we have a coupon code to enter in our, on our website right now. It'll give you $20 off and it's I love BGG. Um, that's just the coupon code you got to enter on the website. I love BGG. And uh, yeah, we completely redid our website. So go there, check it out. Um, but yeah, that's 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 what we got going with Crystal Palace right now. All right. I appreciate the proper propaganda. <laughs> the code <right> there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we still have a minute. I don't know if you want to talk about reworking your warehouse. Of course, you're working alone right now. Uh, yeah, um, so um, we're with with Ohio. Um, we're slowly being able to uh, get some resources back. Um, I think some people are going to be starting next week. Um, we have to do a, a ton of things with like social distancing and everything. Um, so we're preparing for that. But yeah, we uh, I have a new warehouse down in Cincinnati, and we completely um, enhanced it with some nice uh, pallet rack infrastructure and got a new forklift and everything. So it's been pretty exciting, even though given the current climate with everything, but uh, lots of fun. All right. Well, it's good to know that things are going well enough. Do you make that sort of uh, advance in the yeah. infrastructure <laughs> that you have for your company? I mean, it's definitely a good yeah. sign of things. I'm planning for the long term. I think uh, I think we're all going to come back from this um, and, and, and we'll uh, we'll be healthier than ever once we can once we come out of this thing. So. All right. Good to hear Clay. 
Uh, thanks very much for the detailed overview of Crystal Palace. And I look forward to, uh, well, I didn't beat you in Stick'em when we played together, but it is definitely fun inflicting pain close. on one another. <laughs> <laughs> it was close, man. Yeah, yeah. we'll get yeah. together one of these times. I don't even know when it's going to be next, but it'll happen. Again. All right, take care.